There are many ancient anomalies which can be found upon the Giza Plateau and indeed across much of ancient Egypt as a whole. Many areas which are clear evidence of a highly capable, highly intelligent past civilization who once called this landmass home. Not only are the ancient pyramids a clear feat of incredible ancient engineering, possibly the most astonishing found the world over, but many of the still existing ancient temples are testament to a now lost, yet once incredibly advanced ancient civilization. And although many academics are funded to push the theory that the pyramids, having once been the burial places of Egyptian kings, the truth that we still do not actually know the original purpose for these ancient structures remains. Not only do these structures, along with many other areas, such as the basalt floor found at their feet, still show clear evidence of lost technology, unquestionably left by high-speed, high-rotation stone-cutting technologies, and many of the tombs and other artifacts found throughout the ancient ruins, unarguably once machine-worked upon enormous, as yet unexplained lathes. But there also exist some astonishing features within the record books, documented anomalies within our own antiquity, regarding some of the biggest yet still existing anomalies within ancient Egypt. Anomalies that although are now all but lost to history, have been recorded and documented since our own records began, specifically Roman records. The Colossi or Colossus of Memnon are listed as containing some of the largest megalithic blocks that have currently been recorded and investigated across the world. And although these statues have virtually crumbled over the eons, records of these statues stretches back many centuries, features now largely, and we believe, deliberately ignored by mainstream academics. These statues once possessed an astonishing characteristic one many claimed as a divine experience, one which would draw countless individuals on a pilgrimage across the desert, to witness at first light every morning. The Colossi of Memnon were built from a single piece of stone each. They are oriented towards the sunrise at winter solstice, and throughout modern study have had a number of fearless individuals expose their true past grandeur to the world. Estimates for the two statues' original weight are most commonly noted to have been around the 1,000 tons mark, with the most famous report within R. T. Gould's A Book of Marvels, 1937, which contained an estimate of 1,200 tons. The statues are made from blocks of quartzite sandstone, which was quarried at El Gabal El Amar, near modern-day Cairo, then transported 420 miles to Thebes. And although modern academia would like to attribute these feats to our more modern ancestors, namely the ancient Egyptians, any logical explanation of how this feat was achieved, or indeed how they were so precisely carved, remains absent from all explanations of these monumental statues, not only their transport and creation, but how these ancient monuments used to sing. Early Greek and Roman tourists who came to hear the sound gave the statue the name of Memnon. Memnon was a hero of the Trojan War, a king of Ethiopia, who led his armies to Troy's defense, but was ultimately slain by Achilles. Memnon was said to be the son of Eos, the goddess of dawn, and after his death, his mother is said to have shed tears every morning. The singing of the statues was attributed to this mother mourning for her son. The earliest written reference to the singing statues comes from the Greek historian and geographer Strabo, who claimed to have heard their song during a visit in 20 BC. The second-century Greek traveler and geographer Pausanias compared it to the string of a lyre breaking. Others described it as the striking of brass or a strange, ghostly, almost divine whistling. For more than two centuries, the singing statues brought tourists from all over the empire, including several Roman emperors. Many left inscriptions on the base of the statue, reporting whether they had heard the sound or not. Nearly 90 inscriptions are still legible upon their base today. Who created these statues? How were they able to sing? They are clearly an astonishing ancient accomplishment, once achieved by a now lost advanced civilization. Monuments, which we find, 
highly compelling. We recently covered the so-called Inca Road, an ancient stone pathway that stretches an astonishing 25,000 miles across Peru, Chile, and far beyond. Linking countless ancient, as yet unexplained ruins, this enormous ancient road was carved straight through solid cliff faces, along near vertical rock faces, and is an astonishing example of ancient architecture. Although currently claimed as being Incan, and conveniently often overlooked by mainstream academic study, along with the sites it connects, it is clearly an example of building capability far out of the reach of Incan civilization. The Huaca del Sul, an adobe brick temple, that regardless of the clear feet of its construction, along with the currently recognized number of builders involved, is regardless of these facts, still stubbornly claimed as having been built by the so-called Mochi civilization between 100 CE to 800 CE. Located upon the northern coast of Peru, the temple is one of several ruins found near the volcanic peak of Cerro Blanco. The other major ruin at the site is the nearby Huaca de la Luna, a better preserved but smaller temple. According to academic opinion, by 450 CE, eight different stages of construction had been completed on the Huaca del Sul. The technique was additive. New layers of bricks were laid directly on top of the old, hence large quantities of bricks were required for the construction. Archaeologists have estimated that the Huaca del Sul was composed of over 130 million adobe bricks, and was the largest pre-Columbian adobe structure built in the Americas. The number of different maker's marks on the bricks suggests that over a hundred different communities contributed to the construction of the Huacas. Yet, regardless of the clearly astonishing ancient feat that this structure was, largely attributed to be the remains of an ancient pyramid, the facts surrounding the past true purpose of this structure is merely ignored in favor of an attribution to a more modern ancestor. For if it is indeed noted as being that of an ancient pyramid, like many alternative, independent, and often nicknamed fringe researchers have, it would open the door to some controversial questions. One in particular being why would a civilization located at the claimed time within history build pyramids? Just like those upon the African continent, namely upon the Giza Plateau. Why would a culture that had supposedly never met ancient Egyptians, just like those ruins found all over Guatemala, and indeed South America, have built these enigmatic structures purely by coincidence? It seems that the evidence has mounted over the years, in opposition to such opinion, and these ancient ruins are simply improbable to have merely come about by chance or coincidence, and were indeed once built with full intentions that are now lost to the eons. Who built the Huaca del Sul? Why did they build it? It is undoubtedly an astonishing ancient ruin, one which we find highly compelling. Although many academic bodies and the individuals funded by said institutions are only allowed to attribute ancient ruins to known heavily researched past civilizations, there exist many features within these sites found all over the world which tell a very different story. Not only are they indicative of an ancient civilization far more capable than our well-studied more recent ancestors, but many of them share features within their builds with many other sites who are separately claimed by the as-mentioned institutions as the work of completely different past civilizations, who we feel are far more likely, based on said evidence, to have been mere re-inhabitants of these sites, which allowed these civilizations to flourish, adopting said features into their own cultures, and often claiming said works as their own to outside groups. Not only do the similarities show an undeniable connection with sites currently argued as completely isolated ancient works of architecture, but many of the most astonishing features of said sites are not only ignored, 
but often overlooked by the world as a result, which we also feel is strong evidence of not only a deliberate attempt to ignore the facts in favor of fallacy, but clear proof of a conspiracy, which is largely funded in an effort to keep these particular proverbial smoking guns hidden and under wraps, often avoiding further study as a result. This clearly due to the reality they contain regarding facts about the history of man, which academia is not only responsible for hiding in favor of funding, but are responsible for hiding the true history of man from man himself in an effort to merely appear all-knowing in the face of things they currently have no explanation for. And the so-called Inca Road is indeed one of these said ancient anomalies, which is of an astonishing size. It is so big, in fact, it even dwarfs the Great Wall of China. An ancient relic so big, it can be seen from space. One might ask, how can I not have been informed of such an ancient relic? But once one realizes the current academically baffling accomplishment this so-called Inca masterpiece must have once been, the conspiracy to keep such a site largely unknown will become clear. It is a road system that not only links nearly every unexplained ancient ruin currently known to exist within Peru, connecting Puma Punca, Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, Olante Tambo, along with many others. It, in fact, covers an incredible 25,000 miles, topping the Chinese wall by nearly 7,000 miles, going all the way through Peru, Chile, and spreading out far beyond, with bridges, tunnels seemingly carved straight through cliff faces, and even following sheer drops, once cut horizontally into near-vertical rock faces, with plunging sides dropping at times thousands of meters to valleys below. We strongly believe that although the road has clearly been utilized by an unimaginably large number of travelers and has been severely eroded away nearly everywhere, the method of construction now hidden by erosion, that this surface, just like that of the roads of Pompeii, were actually formed using a now lost stone technique, now largely known as that of polygonal masonry. Not only a lost, now unexplained technique of stone building, indicative of a lost civilization and technologies, but the sheer size of the road and the features accomplished along its incredible length still provides countless unexplained features, which cannot be explained as Inca. Yet not only is it and its features academically ignored, but we feel the proposition of it being an Inca relic just like all the ancient sites we have already covered in which it connects, are far too advanced to be claimed as Incan. How can one claim that such a relic was built by our more recent ancient ancestors, when not only does this site link much of ancient Peru and is largely ignored, but not only the road but all said sites currently hold feats of ancient engineering which cannot be explained? It is clearly a feature that is indicative of a far more advanced, far more ancient civilization, which once constructed this road and the sites found along it, merely re-inhabited by our now well-studied far more recent ancient ancestors. It is a place we find highly compelling. Sometimes an artifact will be discovered which challenges our entire understandings of the world around us. We are confronted with things that, according to our worldview, shouldn't exist. And in 1991, researchers performing geomineralogical studies along several Russian rivers would make such a discovery. Known as the Ural Mountains, it is a notoriously strange, cold, and incredibly lonely slice of the Russian landscape. Accounts of snow yetis and terrifying creatures have plagued the mountain ranges for decades even including a reported attack by such a creature within Dyatlov Pass. The Ural Mountains is clearly one of the weirdest and most isolated places on Earth. And it seems it has also been the resting place for a series of several thousand tiny coil-shaped artifacts, ancient nanotechnology of an unknown and quite possibly alien origin. The larger artifacts made from copper, while the smaller ones from tungsten. 
What is clearly the most astonishing thing regarding these tiny ancient relics is their size, some of the exhibits being only 2.4 macrons long, or around one ten thousandth of an inch. Seeing as though the average human hair is about 100 microns, it's safe to assume that these microscopic objects were not constructed by our primitive ancestors, for to create such intriguing objects would have required a knowledge and an application of sophisticated nanotechnologies. Not only do they exhibit characteristics reminiscent of components used within our own modern nanotechnologies, the nano coils also exhibit golden ratio proportions, a trait which could only be present if intelligently designed by mathematically wise beings. Some skeptics to their true history have predictably attempted to speculate that the apparently alien objects were simply fragments of debris from the nearby rocket test facility, but a report from the Moscow Institute of Technology concluded that their vast age was enough to dismiss this as a possibility. The conclusive figure acquired from this official dating put their initial creation to around 300,000 years ago. Studies performed by facilities in Helsinki, Moscow and St. Petersburg also backed up the claims that the coil-shaped objects were manufactured in the very distant past, stating that they predate modern history by some orders of magnitude. Unfortunately, as with so many items we cover, since the nanospirals principal investigator Dr. Johannes Fieback died in 1999, the research has been halted. What's more, predictably, the current whereabouts of all of these ancient nano-artifacts is unfortunately unknown. It's fair to say, however, that the Ural Mountains still possess some of these curious and very ancient objects, but judging by their size, they won't be very easy to find. We recently covered the astonishing ancient megaliths known as the Colossus of Memnon, a pair of 1,000-plus ton statues that have not only survived unknown eons into the modern day, but still possessed some of their most intriguing features all the way into known recorded history, most notably during the Roman Empire, when they were often regarded as having been able to sing at first light every day. We also touched upon the little-known conclusion, made by a number of individuals and even funded academics, referring to many other enigmatic artifacts that have been found across Giza, and even Egypt as a whole, as having been once lathe-worked. These often stone artifacts are so precise in their construction, with pottery even displaying a level of delicacy from their makers, that the only explanation for their existence could be attributed to having once been machine-worked, with the ancient Egyptians, claimed as their so-called makers, having once possessed enormous lathes, something modern man has only understood and utilized for a very brief time span, with a number of multi-ton sarcophagi also sharing this explanation for their creation. As to explain them as having once been made merely by hand is not only illogical, but almost an inconceivable tale to attach to such precisely made stonework. Created with not only astonishing symmetry, but also an astoundingly delicate and precise attention to detail, which modern man has only attained using modern lathes. Yet any explanation as to how these lathes were powered, how these individuals worked such enormous stones, or indeed what tools they utilized to cut such hard stones, remains largely unexplained. It is as if modern academia had been cornered by these past capabilities of this now lost civilization, having to admit that such precision can only be accomplished with seemingly advanced technology, yet, conveniently, leaving any practical explanation of what these technologies looked like, where they went, or how they were made or used, absent from their explanations of these incredible artifacts. Yet, interestingly, Ancient Egypt is not the only place which contains these remarkable relics. Babalovo, also known as Bavolovka Palace, is a historical building located near the city of St. Petersburg, Russia. This palace was built towards the end of the 18th century, during the reign of Catherine II of Russia. And one of the most astonishing relics found within this building is the so-called bathtub, which is claimed to have been made for the Tsar Alexander I. 
This explanation of origin is regardless of its incredible size, symmetry, and indeed precision, in which it was once cut with precision that just like the enigmatic artifacts that can be found within Egypt, should only have a logical explanation of creation, which included that of a lost technology, or more specifically, an enormous lathe and heavy-duty yet precision-cutting instruments. Yet curiously, this explanation is absent from mainstream academia's explanation as to the origins of this enormous multi-ton stone dish. Nero's bathtub is yet another smoking gun of this now lost technology and indeed lost civilization. And although the vaults beneath where it lay within the Vatican measures an incredible 25 kilometers in length, packed full of hidden writings, artifacts, and historical controversies, this so-called bathtub is housed in full public view upon the floors of the Catholic palace above. These hidden vaults spared its presence, as if when first displayed, those in possession of it did not recognize the past accomplishment that this so-called bathtub once was. Not only the unusual shape of this other enormous dish for a bathtub, but the technology and techniques of stonework that would have once had to have been utilized to create it. They clearly believe that it was indeed created by Nero himself, and not a past relic of a now lost civilization, with all similar relics found within ancient Egypt exposed as ancient machine stones. The question is, who made these ancient relics? How did they make them? And if made by the claimed builders, why is this technology now lost? They are undoubtedly highly compelling.